So this is the second lecture, and I'd like to start uh, my courses relatively slowly, so we kind of start a little slow and then uh, you know we, we pick up speed a little bit. So last lecture that was about the introduction to uh, computer graphics, what is computer graphics, it is very light, and today it's going to be relatively light as well. Uh, the stuff that we're going to cover is going to be basically linear algebra, where I think we're studying. All right. So our topic today is just some basic math background. And this corresponds to the chapter two of our book, but I am not planning to cover the entire chapter two. Chapter two is actually quite extensive. It's talking about all sorts of math that is relevant to all sorts of graphics related stuff. The part that I'm going to be covering is going to be things that we're going to need like now, right away. And then as we need more stuff, I'm, I'm going to talk about that, that part as well, right? So this is a, this is not a full extensive lecture regarding chapter two. So chapter two involves a lot more. The part that I'm actually going to concentrate on today is going to be over here, the vectors. And I'm going to just briefly talk about matrices as well. Um, and the way that I want to talk about vectors is that I'm not going to tell you everything to know about vectors, right? I'm going to talk about the, the basic things about vectors, um, you know, you guys have taken linear algebra, so you should be familiar with that, but this is going to be a sort of refresher. But beyond that, I would like to give an intuition of a vector beyond its, its mathematical description. That, that's the whole goal of this particular lecture. So, as always, feel free to interrupt me at any time. Um, I'll go through this. Probably it's going to be a relatively short lecture. Uh, our um, upcoming lectures are going to be uh, more uh, beefy in terms of content, right? Okay, so let's talk about vectors. So what's a vector? A vector could be, can it be 1D? Sure, so a 1D vector would be uh, a scalar, right? Just some scalar value, I call it X here, it's just some weird notation. Um, it could be 2D. If it's 2D, I'm going to have two scalars. Let's call them X and Y. It's a vector with two scalars in 2D, right? In 3D, a vector will have three components, and 4D is going to have four components. Why are we looking at 4D? Because we are actually interested in 4D in computer graphics, and we'll get there. We'll cover that stuff. Don't worry about that. Uh, and a vector in general can be ND, right? Could be could be defined in, in an n-dimensional space in which case it's going to have n components. Um, and these sort of ve vectors are used in computer graphics, but mostly in computer graphics, the stuff that we're going to be interested in are going to be right over here, right? So 2D, 3D, and 4D. Th those are going to be the, the things that we will very, very frequently use in various computer graphics um, algorithms. Um, and the vectors, um, they are used a lot in certain special cases. So they're not extensively used everywhere in graphics, but they're, they definitely have place, uh, places where they're uh, very, very important. So the, the stuff that uh, we're going to be mostly dealing with are going to be these, these three. Um, and of course, we're oftentimes related in 3D graphics, so this, this 3D one is going to be the, the most important one. All right? Um, so, but and, and typically, when we when we're writing vectors, we prefer using this this uh, column notation, right? And instead of this this row notation. So this is a this is a column vector over here, and this is a row vector over here, and and this is the the notation that we want to use. But you know, sometimes when you're writing some text, it doesn't quite look nice because right, it's, it's a column sort of sticking out of the line. Um, so we want to be able to write it this way. So all we need to do is we just take this, this vector and we flip it over, we transpose it, right? So this vector is equivalent to this vector transpose, right? So whenever I'm going to be writing vectors in, in row format, you'll, you'll, you'll see this transpose notation here. That means it's actually a vector like this, but written horizontally. Sounds good. Column vector is the, the standard we um, pretty much always use in graphics. So the question is, all right, a vector is three 
values, three scale values, well, what does that really mean? Um, well, it can mean a position in space. In 3D space, x, y, and z coordinates of something, is going, it can mean a position. It can also mean something actually very different, but, well, maybe I should say very different, different but related, that is direction, direction with length. And these are actually two different things. Um, and it's important for you to understand them as two different things, but at the same time, they're actually very closely related. One of them defines a direction with some magnitude, with some length. The other one is just a position in space. So let's say that I um, gave you a vector, right? I said, you know, that my vector is five, seven, three, right? It could mean a position or a direction. Let's say that it's a position, all right? And I tell you, okay, my vector value is five, seven, three, so you know where, what that position is, right? Fairly easy. I'm telling you what it is, so you can, you know, can you really? Well, what is five, seven, and three? I mean, all right, we, we need to have some units. We can't just say numbers. All right, let's say that I have units, all right, five meters, seven meters, three meters. All right, this metric system that makes too much sense. We don't like it. Let, let's move on to something that makes less sense. Uh, let's say, call it units. Five units, seven units, three units, whatever units we want to use. Could be some generic units, could be whatever you would like to use. So now that I've given you these units, you know what a unit is, you know what that position is, right? Maybe? No? Oh, it's not that easy, actually, because, um, you know, first of all, I don't want to write these units. Let's, let's, let's get, get rid of the units. All right, I, I'm going to write it like this. So when I say five, seven, three, I mean five units, seven units, three units, whatever. To be able to understand what this means, I need to know these uh, x, y, and z directions, right? I need to, what, what is the x direction? Where is this? All right, so let's say x is mm, this way, right? This is x. Uh, if x is there, y is over here and z is up there. All right, so I have some, some direction. I, I define this direction, so this is x, and this is y, and I have z. All right, I'm, I'm not sure if it's right-handed, left-handed. I'm seeing myself mirrored, so I'm not exactly sure what, which one makes sense, but uh, hopefully I didn't pick the, 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 the wrong directions. Um, so now I know the directions. I can, I can tell uh, what this position means, right? Well, it's, it's, it's not that easy, unfortunately. Oh, I just lost my control. All right, it's not, it's not, it's not that easy. I also need to know the, its origin over here. So it's not just the directions, but I need to know the origin. Now, okay, you may think that, oh, this is so trivial stuff. Why are you wasting time here? This is important. This is very important and oftentimes missed. A vector on its own is entirely meaningless. It does not mean anything unless you provide a context. Only within this context, a vector has a meaning. Right? In this context, if I say that this is my origin position and these are my x, y, and z directions, that's when a, a vector has a meaning. Now, when I give you this vector that says five, seven, three, I can say, all right, I'm gonna walk uh, five units along X and then seven units along Y and then uh, three units along Z and that's gonna be the position, right? So now it has a meaning. And this is very, very important because when we're doing some, some graphic stuff, we're gonna be using different coordinate frames for different things. And if I give you a vector in one coordinate frame, and I give you another vector in a different coordinate frame, you cannot do anything with these two vectors because they are living in different spaces. If you want to do anything with these two vectors, you need to first move them into the same space and then you can do something with them. So it's very important to understand that a vector is meaningless without this context. Okay? So now, going back to this question of position or direction, um, a vector would mean, let's say, a position. If, if, it, if it means a position, it also means that 
the, the direction from the origin to that position, right? So that direction is also, uh, is also the meaning of this, this, this vector. So that's why even though there are these two different meanings of a vector in terms of computer graphics, um, we typically use a single type to represent a vector because they are sort of, in some ways, interchangeable. When you think about a vector in the context of a coordinate frame, you can think about a position as a direction from the origin of the coordinate frame, right? And this is how we, these two meanings come together. All right, simple stuff, but I just wanted to emphasize and make sure that we all um, uh, can we all can think about vectors in this one. Now, um, in mathematics, oftentimes I just want to I don't want to write a vector like this because it's too long. I'm just going to represent it as a single value, let's call it A. And this is a very typical notation for a vector. You, you put an arrow on top. Uh, for whatever reason, um, we don't like it in computer graphics. We, we typically use a slightly different notation. Uh, not always, but the typical notation in, in computer graphics would use a bold lowercase letter. That would mean that this is probably a vector, right? I mean, this varies when you're reading books and papers about computer graphics. And people may use different notations, but this is the most common notation that's used in computer graphics. So, bold letter, you realize that, oh, this is probably a vector. And if I have X, Y, and Z components of a vector, um, I can write them as, like, A is my vector, so I can say AX, AY, and AZ as my components. Again, but as you can see, these scalars are not bold, and they're also italicized, so that's that's the typical notation that we use. And it's written in column vector format. All good? So one of the first things I'm going to say about vectors is the, the length of a vector. That's going to be, uh, this is the notation for the length of a vector. And it's going to be x squared, ay squared, az squared, so, right? And you know where this is coming from, right? So it's just the, the length of the vector, as the Pythagorean theorem will tell you how to compute it, and this is what it is. Uh, and I'm telling you this because a very, very, very important concept in terms of vectors is the concept of the unit vector. Now, we're going to be using unit vectors quite a bit, and it's going to be very important uh, for a lot of our computation. Um, a unit vector is a vector that has a, a length one unit, whatever your unit is. And that's gonna make, um, that, that's gonna be very, very important uh, that we're gonna, a, a lot of times we're gonna get a vector and we're gonna take that vector and we're gonna shrink it down or adjust its length such that it becomes a unit vector because we will need a unit vector to define that particular direction. We won't care about its length, we'll just care about its direction, in which case, uh, we're going to convert it to a unit vector because that will allow you to do some, some mathematical operations. Um, all right, so a vector can also be represented as a you know, line with an arrow. So that's my vector. Let's say this is vector A. Uh, the negative of vector A would be the vector going in the opposite direction, right? That's negative vector A. Actually, maybe I shouldn't put it this way, because I told you, a vector on its own does not make much sense. We need to have, provide the context. Probably uh, in uh, probably this point over here was our origin, right? So negative A should be this. So, so if this is, this is A, negative A should be, should be this guy over here. Because, um, you know, Origin is important. All right, what else can I do? Well, I can add two vectors. In this case, um, a plus b is a plus b, right? And you know, I can write it in this form. I can just the, the way you add it is just you add the x, y, and z components, and you're done. Can I do subtraction fairly easily? I can do subtraction. Yes, in this case, we're doing b minus a, so I'm going in the opposite direction. So. B minus A. Now, you can think that this is very trivial, and 
probably it is if you're familiar with vectors, it's, it, it is trivial stuff, but it's stuff that you kind of need to be, you need to be used to thinking about, you need to get used to thinking about in, in these visual terms. Um, and you know, this is the, the equation for it, very, very simple. Now, when it comes to um, multiplication, there are actually multiple ways of doing <laughs> multiplication with vectors. Um, probably the most common one is the dot product. Um, a dot product will take two vectors and it will form a scalar out of those two vectors. So this is the, the formula for a dot product. You just multiply x, y, and z components and add them together. Right? That's our dot product. That's the, the result is going to be a scalar. Um, now, that product is used quite extensively in computer graphics for all sorts of things. So let's talk about it just, just a little bit. Um, but before I go, in, go, go into it, I would like you to, to recognize something. Um, so the dot product of a vector to itself. So a dot a would be, that would be a squared, that would be the squared length of the, the vector itself. Right. And that's, that's also used a lot um, uh, for all sorts of notation. We sometimes do just dot product of a vector by itself. That means the, the square squared of its length. Right. But dot product means also other things that are very, very important for us. For example, imagine this case. Imagine that I would like to know the, the projection of this, this vector a, a along this direction B. And I would like to know this length, this length D is what I would like to know. I can use dot product to compute that. Uh, now, if my vector B here is a unit vector, if this is a unit vector, that means its length is one, then the dot product is going to give me the length, the, 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 this length over here, the length of this projection. And that's a very, very important property. I'm going to be using this property quite a lot. So, but what happens if B is not a unit vector? Well, then in general case, okay, I'm just going to divide it by the length of B. <laughs> All right, so D is going to be um, A dot product B divided by the length of B. All right. So, notice that here it's not symmetrical. Right, so I'm not dividing by the length of A or anything. So this B is here so that B divided by the length of B will give me a unit vector, right? So I'm basically taking a dot product with a unit vector effectively. That, that's why it's there. Um, if I want to know the projection of B on the direction of A over here, then I'm going to divide it by the length of A then A has to be a unit vector because then, then I'll be interested in the direction of A but not necessarily its magnitude. Another thing is the, the angle between two vectors. Um, this is a very, very important equation and we'll, we, we will be using that um, quite a lot. Uh, so that product can also be written as the length of A times the length of B times the cosine of the angle between the two of them. Uh, sometimes we'll need a cosine of the angle between two directions. Um, you will see that this is a very, very useful concept later on. Uh, I'm not getting into the details of why it's useful at the moment. Uh, but believe me when I tell you, it's very, very useful. And oftentimes, we will be dealing with unit vectors, right? I'm going to have a unit vector A, I'm going to have a unit vector B, in which case the length of A and length of B are going to be just one, so they will cancel out. So the dot product will give me the cosine of the angle between the two of them, when the two of them are unit vectors, right? And we're going to be using this, this property quite a lot as well. All right. So another property that we're going to be using is that if these two vectors are perpendicular to each other, then the cosine of the angle between the two of them will be zero. Right? And if the cosine is zero, then the whole um, right-hand side of that equation uh, will become zero. Um, 
So dot product of two perpendicular vectors uh, will give me zero. And this is great because if I want to check whether or not two vectors are perpendicular to each other, I can easily use this, right? Uh, and this gives me a scalar and it tells me if they are perpendicular. Um, but be warned here, um, this is not the only condition when I'm going to have the dot product zero. I can have one of my vectors a zero vector. <laughs> well, in which case, maybe it's okay to assume that a zero vector is perpendicular to every other vector. I don't know. I, I don't know if it actually makes sense, but maybe that's one way to think about it. All right. Uh, so here are some dot product identities, uh, simple stuff. You can swap the order of A and B, that's perfectly fine. You can compute them in whatever order you want. And, and if you, you know, multiply one of them with some scalar, you can just move that scalar to the other one or just move it out and just take dot product and then uh, do the scalar. And you know, it all comes from the dot product formulation. So all, all of this is coming from the dot product formulation. So this is a dot product. This is the the, the form. The, this is the uh, vector operation that we're going to be using quite extensively, uh, probably the most extensively. Uh, so I wanted to spend quite a bit of time here just to get you guys familiar with it. Although the math behind it is relatively simple, it's not anything complicated, right? Here's our other product, um, cross product. So cross product would take two vectors, um, A and B, and it would form a third vector. In this case, it's shown as A cross B, right? Uh, and this third vector is going to be perpendicular to both of these vectors. So A and B, they don't have to be perpendicular to each other. They, they're just some arbitrary vectors. But the vector I'm getting out of them is perpendicular to both of them. That's, that's very, very important. Um, and oftentimes we're going to use cross product for that very property. Oftentimes we're going to use cross product so that we can get a vector that is perpendicular to both of these vectors. Um, another related thing here is that, uh, so in 2D, how am I going to define a cross product in 2D? Because how can I get two vectors A and B in 2D on a plane, and the third vector, A cross B, has to be sort of sticking out of the plane, right? So if you look at this A and B, it's sort of defining a plane here, and my third vector is going to be perpendicular to that plane. So it's not, it, it, it is possible to define cross products in 2D, but it doesn't become a vector in 2D. In cross, in cross product in 2D actually becomes a scalar. We, we, all I get is going to be the, the, the length of this vector, not the, not the direction, because this direction is sort of outside of this 2D domain. That, does that make sense? So in, in 2D, you can think about cross product as something that produces a scalar. And what's that going to give? That scalar is going to be the area of this lovely parallelogram here is going to give me the area of this parallelogram. In 3D, I'm going to get a vector that is perpendicular to these two vectors, and it's going to be outside of this, this plane that these two vectors live in. Um, and its length is going to be the area of this parallelogram over here. Now, as you can see, this is quite useful. I mean, I can, I can, I, 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 we're going to use it oftentimes for just for the purpose of getting a perpendicular uh, vector. Uh, but sometimes we can use it for um, measuring the area between these two angles, between these two vectors. Um, and one thing to note here is that, uh, so if these two vectors A and B, if they are in the same direction, if they are, I have one vector and another vector on top of that. If they are in the same direction, then this area is going to be zero, right? And they don't have to have the same, same length. As long as they're in the same direction, this area is going to be zero. And if this area is zero, then my cross product is going to be a vector with zero length 
So that's going to be the zero vector. Right? Uh, yeah, I'm going to get a zero vector with no discernible direction because it's going to be zero, zero, zero. All right. Um, so cross product is not as nice as dot product in the way that it behaves in equations. It's a bit more complicated. I'm not giving you the formulation for cross product, but it's fairly easy to find um, if you don't remember. Um, but what's important to, to remember is that the cross product of, um, of A cross B, and this is the negative, um, negative A cross B. So if I just take A, and flip it around, and now it goes in that direction. So that's negative A. Uh, so A cross B is going to give me this direction. Negative A cross B is going to give me the opposite direction. All right, and we handle this using right-handed coordinate frame. Uh, if we're not sure which which direction to use. So X Y Z. Um, all right, so as I said, it doesn't behave as, as nicely. Uh, so if you uh, change the order of turns, you're going to get the, the, the opposite direction. Uh, a scalar times, that the scalar will, will come out, that's going to be fine. Uh, and it says this distributive property. Uh, and that's going to be, um, you know, A cross uh, B plus C is going to be A cross B plus A cross C. And we are, we're going to be using stuff like this just to uh, drive stuff, but, uh, you know, just, just to, just, 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 just wanted to provide this three basic information. You can find more, more uh, information about cross product uh, when we need to. There's a question here. Can you use the, the thumb curls to determine the direction? Yes, that's right. What I like to use is I like to put my hand like this. And, um, the, what, what, I, what I prefer is uh, I pick the first vector A and then B. So this is going to give me the, the result. That, that's what I like to use. But you know, there are different ways of doing this as well. Uh, right hand. I'm not sure if this appears for you as my right hand or my left hand, I'm, I, don't, I, I think it appears as my right hand, so it should be okay. All right, so there are, there is one more product definition for vectors, but the output of that product definition is going to be a matrix, and we're not going to be using it that often. Uh, we will be using it sometimes. Um, you know, this, this linear algebra is used a lot in computer graphics for all sorts of things. But for general stuff, uh, dot product and cross product is basically all we need. Um, so, be, be, before we're done, I just wanted to very briefly mention matrices. Uh, so we're going to be using matrices quite a bit. I'm not getting into the details of matrices today too much because uh, you know we're going to be using we're going to be talking about transformations very soon, and transformations are all about matrix operations. So we're going to talk about matrices quite a bit then. Um, so I'll leave it to to that time. But just uh, you know just to touch on matrices a little bit. Uh, so a three by three matrix will have nine components like this and. When for matrix notation, you now these are the nine scalars, uh, we typically use um, uppercase, uh, uppercase bold letters. Typically, not always, uh, but that's the, that's the, the most common notation for, for representing matrices uh, that's used in computer graphics literature. Yeah. Um, matrices, can be, you know, various, can have various dimensions in X and Y, but typically what we're interested in will be matrices in 2D, 3, uh, 3D, and 4D, and those are going to be 2x2 two two matrices, 3x3 three three matrices, and 4x4 four four matrices. So these are the most common matrices that we will be using in computer graphics. You will also see 3x4 matrices, but they're typically a substitute for a 4x4 four four matrix. I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, so if you see um, three by four matrices, just 
think that it's actually supposed to be a 4x4 four four matrix. They're just um, ignoring the, the last column because for whatever operations they're using, it's not needed. And we'll talk about that, so don't worry about it. Uh, but basically, these are the matrices that we'll be interested in. Now, again, for certain operations in computer graphics that, that commonly used in, for example, um, for solving optimization problems, um, you may use much, much larger matrices than million by million is definitely a, a reasonable matrix that actually people use. Uh, but those are, those are very specific to certain tasks. Uh, for most operations in computer graphics, we'll typically be dealing with the two by two if we're dealing with 2D, 2D graphics, if we're dealing with 3D graphics, it's going to be three by three and four by four matrices is what we're going to be dealing with, right? Um, and the most common operation that we will be using uh, with matrices is going to be we're going to take a matrix and we're just going to multiply a vector by a matrix. And this operation is going to be the basic operation that we're going to be using for transforming vectors from one coordinate frame to another coordinate frame. So that's going to be the, the important part. Now I'm seeing some question. The fourth dimension is time. No, the fourth dimension is not quite time. Um, it's a little bit of a hack that we like using. It's called homogeneous coordinates. Um, and I'm, I'm going to explain what it means um, in the context of transformation. So don't, don't, don't worry about it for the time being. Uh, so we're not thinking about the time dimension uh, and get up. Matrices are not um, are not very often used for handling time related stuff. Um, sorry, matrices are used a lot in animation, but we're not going to have like five by five matrices because we have the time dimension or anything. Don't, we're not doing that. Um, I'm, not, I'm not saying that it doesn't happen at all. I'm just saying it's it's not a general practice. Uh, so we're we, we're not going to worry about that. So why we need four by four matrices will make a lot more sense when we're talking about transformations. Just for the time being, just know that they exist. And the reason why I'm talking about that is just to tell you that, you know, matrices, it's, it's a big topic, right? There are lots of things about matrices. Uh, but the things that we're mostly going to be dealing with is just going to be this, right? Nothing scary, just multiply a vector by a matrix. That, that's what it is. And this matrix is oftentimes going to be a square matrix. It's going to be a two by two, three by three, or five by five, four by four matrix. That's it, right? Okay, we're also going to multiply matrices by other matrices. We're going to multiply two matrices together. That, that's another thing we're going to do. So um, let's see that. The, the important thing to understand here is that A times B and B being two matrices, it's not equal to B times A. That, that, that's the point that I wanted to make here. Uh, okay. So, uh, you know, this is the very, very basic math stuff that we're going to be relying upon. Uh, you know, not, nothing complicated, and I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys are all, all familiar with it, so maybe you think that this, this lecture was a waste of time for some of you. Hopefully it wasn't a waste of time for everybody. Um, and, uh, you know, what I would like you to get out of this is to uh, think about vectors as uh, directions and positions in, in in space, uh, in, in, and, and, and think about them in visual terms, because uh, that's how we're going to handle these uh, vectors, that's how we're going to use these vectors.